Hi, how are you? Good, I hope. Here's a very interesting book. To Die in Mexico, Dispatches from Inside the Drug War by John Gibbler. Yes, there's a lot of info in here and uh, it ties in with our foreign policies. And uh, they're lying that uh, they're a democracy there since they don't let their people buy guns and protect themselves. And I think that's why they don't speak, a lot of them don't speak English here. So they don't have to explain what they know is really going on. And in Mexico, there's a lot of uh, honest journalists dying to keep their mouth shut by those people that are creating this so-called conspiracy is real. Okay, just a few things from here. Um, I'll talk of law <clears throat> and order in the drug war battlefields where 16-year-old kids roam the streets with AR-15 assault rif rifles following orders like kill every last effing one of them where one of the principal combat tactics in the trafficking zones is to heat up enemy territory by massacring innocent people where 5,000 federal police constantly patrol the city with the highest homicide rate in the world and the rate keeps going up where 95% of the murders <clears throat> are not even being investigated all such talk of strengthening the law is simply bullshit. Calderon sent the army into the streets to protect him, seeking to grasp through the exercise of violence, the social legitimacy he never achieved through the ballot box. The army, meanwhile, does what it has always done with drug traffickers, sell the plaza to one group and eliminate that group's rivals. That's how they look at competition in Mexico. And in the United States, where what is all this talk of prohib prohibition as the only way to address health concerns, crime rates, and keeping children safe where decades of narcotic prohibition has produced the highest number of drug users in history, the largest prison population in the world, disproportionately people of color and police forces that subsidize themselves from assets seized during drug busts? In these battlefields, all discourse about prohibition as a public safety policy is self-serving, fundamentalist lies tantamount to complicity and the intellectual authorship of perpetual mass murder. And that goes with genocide too. Pretty much equals it. Let us be clear. Absolute prohibition is legislated death. So what do we know? After decades of a multinational drug war imposed by the United States government, illegal plants, fungi, and chemicals are more plentiful and more people consume them than ever before. Profits generated by this illegal market pulse through the legal capitalist economy and keep it afloat when speculative markets crash. I told y'all, they're gamblers, rich gamblers up there on Wall Street. <clears throat> the United States has the largest prison population in the world. In Mexico, the gateway to the United States drug market is being bludgeoned with murder. U.S. policy has not stopped the flow of drugs, but it has outsourced most of the killing. Judging by the drug war's own proclaimed objective, there is no better case study in failure. But it is not a failure, of course. Illegality increases the value of the commodity. And illegality allows for massive funding of police and military repression and mechanisms of social control. Oh, the military is not to be trusted at all. They're not looking out for us. Mexico is a state of sage since President Felipe Calderon declared war on drugs in September 2006. More than 38,000 Mexicans have been murdered. During the same period, drug money has infused 
over 130 billion into the Mexico's economy, now the country's single largest source of income. Corruption and graft infiltrate all levels of government. Entire towns have become ungovernable, and of every <clears throat> 100 people killed, Mexican police now only investigate approximately five cases. I wonder how much the undertakers are making in Mexico too. They're probably part of it too. But the market is booming. In 2009, more people in the United States bought recreational drugs than ever before. In 2009, the United Nations reported that some $350 billion in drug money had been successfully laundered into the global banking system the prior year, saving it from collapse. How does an extra $350 billion in the global economy affect the murder rates in Mexico? To get the story and connect the dots, acclaimed journalist John Gibbler travels across Mexico and slips behind the front lines to talk with people who live in towns under assault. Newspaper reporters and crime beat photographers, funeral, funeral par parlor workers, convicted drug traffickers, government officials, cab drivers, and others who find themselves living on the lawless frontiers of the drug war. Gibbler talks hair-raising stories of Wall Street battles, kidnappings, narrow escapes, politicians on the take, and the ordinary people who fight for justice as they seek solutions to the crisis that is tearing Mexico apart. Fast paced and urgent to die in Mexico is an extraordinary look inside the raging drug war and its global implications. And it will also show what our people are up to that support the illegality people and drugs that's coming in like the Catholic Church and the Baptist Convention churches that is not the same as the rest of the Baptists. So. There's more investigations and things going on, and uh, people who support that money coming in from me illegally doing things, I bet they're guilty of a bunch more. Needs investigation. Day or night, wherever you are, have a nice one.